This week, we're talking about a wearable drone, fire chat, the ocean cleanup, a potential solution to future droughts in California. I'm Tina Urch, and this is the Technophiles Newscast. Intel is holding a competition to encourage inventors, tinkers, and engineers to submit their ideas for what the newest wearable could be. One team thinks that a wearable drone could be the future. Team Nixie is led by Christoph Kostal, who believes that his wearable could be the future of selfies. His drone will be worn like a bracelet and with the flick of a wrist will be able to take off. It will track your face, take a few selfies, and then return to you where you can snatch it from the air and return it to your wrist. We first talked about the ocean cleanup on the Technophiles podcast back in February, when it was just an idea for cleaning up the ocean's garbage patches. Since then, the organization has raised $2.1 million for their pilot phase, which we reported just last month on episode 217. They are hoping to stretch that money over three to four years as they develop a functional contraption that will be able to clean up a garbage patch in approximately five years' time. The organization is constantly moving and growing. Just last Thursday, they announced that they are hiring for six new management and director positions. We'll keep our eyes on this and I'm sure we'll talk about it again. There have been record-sized protests in Hong Kong over the past few weeks, demanding pro-democracy practices and universal suffrage. One of the fears is that China will shut down mobile internet access, censoring information going to and from phones. As a result, FireChat has become extremely popular among Chinese protesters. FireChat doesn't need internet access to send or receive messages. By connecting to other phones via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, the app is able to bounce messages off of one phone and to another. The beauty of FireChat is that you can basically chat wherever you are, regardless of your network connection status. This kind of technology could be incredibly useful during states of emergency. Think of situations like the Boston Marathon bombing that happened last year. California is going through a serious drought right now, and many people are being taught about water conservation and how to effectively integrate it into their lives. While water conservation by citizens is key, citizens only account for 20% of the water usage in California. The other 80% is used for agriculture. A new technology being developed in Japan uses special LED lights to grow vegetables using only 1% of the water normally needed for produce. They've also reduced the amount of wasted produce from 50% to 10%, increasing productivity a hundredfold. Japan is investing $134 million into the project or just 0.01% of what America spends on agriculture each year. Since California produces over a third of all U.S. vegetables and two-thirds of U.S. fruits, this could be a way for California to reduce the impact of a drought as well as improve crop yield. If we can get America to start funding research into this technology, we could begin to see a major shift in agriculture. It would bring down the cost of fresh fruits and vegetables, encouraging healthy eating all in one fell swoop. That's it for the Technophiles newscast. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please like, share, and subscribe. This video was made with the help of these fantastic people. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this week's episode, check out some of our other recent episodes. Last week, Sean talked about Bendgate, and uh, two weeks ago, Dave talked about Apple. <laughs>